What's up YouTube, my name is Rudy, and today we are going to be talking about guns that shoot nukes. More importantly, we're going to be talking about guns that shoot nuclear missiles. The first thing you will need is a pocket-sized nuke. This nuke I have here, coming in at 2.69 centimeters by 10.8 centimeters, is the perfect accessory for any pocket, whether it be shirt or pant. Yes, you can bring this nuke with you anywhere. It is extremely portable, it has a nice, slick, black coating. This nuke comes in at 513 grams and 32.9 credits with a total yield of 95 tons. We can shoot this thing out of guns, coil guns, we can put it on top of missiles. We can do all kinds of great things with this nuke. So the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to fashion this nuke into a payload. In the ship design section, <clears throat> in the payload section, you can actually construct a nuclear round. And in order to do this, you will need to take your nuke and combine it with a remote control. If without the remote control, you won't, it won't actually detonate. Then you can take this user design and actually use it as a payload in your weapons. So if we go into my modules, I have a number of nuke related cannons. I have two cannons that actually fire nuclear missiles, which we'll get to later. But for the moment, we can take this cannon and duplicate it. And here we can change the payload from the nuke missile to the 95 ton nuke round. And we can make some modifications. Uh... Okay, so we have here a cannon with a muzzle velocity of 3.23 kilometers per second firing a nuclear football. This will be an excellent first step into the world of firing nuclear bullets. So here I've taken one of my WAPO class ships and have modified it to mount the nuke cannon on the prow. Now the nice thing about cannons is that they do not consume very much power. So though they are an explosive danger if this thing takes any hits, but hopefully I'll be able to knock out the enemy before it comes to that. Let's give it a shot. Let's see how this design does. Okay, let's go up against the enemy, the Cleopatra asteroid. This is crazy looking and we will have four wapo new cannon ships versus one enemy gunship and here they come so these are we have a range of 27.6 kilometers against the enemy gunship the enemy gunship outranges us quite a bit so i have a feeling this might turn out to be a massacre i think these cannons might not be powerful enough and i'll set them to ignore range anyway but it's going to be difficult using cannons, I think, to fire these nukes at the appropriate velocity. Alright, the nukes are impacting. Every flash is a nuke. Now you're seeing the nukes actually are detonating one meter before impact, so the radiation and energy produced by the nuke is heating up the enemy armor not actually penetrating it or otherwise causing any other damage but hopefully enough energy will be shot into that ship that you know it'll cook off the modules the the radiators will get damaged and they won't be able to produce power or anything like that but yeah unfortunately our ships were not able to do enough damage to save themselves and the enemy gunship was able to well i mean the enemy gunship really firing at our prow mounted cannons is what did me in so this is just kind of a mediocre design. Just having massive cannons with tons of explosive material hanging around on your ship is not a very good idea. So let's take a look at another design. This is the next generation of nuke launching WAPO spaceship. It features a 32 megawatt 95 ton nuke round turreted coil gun. Yes, each of these coil guns fires one of those nuke rounds. Much more compact and smaller than a cannon, though energy consumption is quite a bit higher. Here's a closer look at that coil gun that I made. Uh, this is kind of the first coil gun that I ever really took seriously in trying to design, but I still really had no, did not have much of an idea of what I was doing. When I got to the a cannon capable of firing my nuke round at an acceptable velocity of 5.76 kilometers per second. I did some tweaking and was pretty much done. This one fires a 95 ton nuke round with an osmium tip. This one here, I was kind of thinking if I have osmium, an osmium 
a shield on the front, the explosion will send osmium shards into the enemy, causing more damage than the nuke alone. Let's hit up the sandbox and see how these new ships do. And let's go up against an enemy gunship like before. We only have one ship this time. I think we might be able to do it though with only one ship. The enemy gunship is almost in range, in contrast to the cannons that we used earlier. So let's orient ourselves broadside. And let's get to it. And there's a Cleopatra in this and uh, I read that it got its uh, strange shape from an impact that it took about 100 million years ago, turning it into this ham bone type thing. And we're firing the nukes from the coil gun at quite a good rate of fire. And we're impacting the enemy. Well, not impacting, but detonating at the enemy. Oh my. We are causing horrendous damage. We're destroying enemy modules. I'm not sure what the Osmium is doing, if anything at all. I feel like this is all flash damage. Alright, we keep doing more and more damage to the enemy ship, but we're not actually killing it. Which is kind of an issue. We're doing tons of flash damage. but the ship isn't actually dying. We still have more than 50% of our ammunition left, too. And we've stopped firing momentarily, because the enemy is out of arc. Here they come, drifting by, glowing, red hot. And we're firing again. A brief respite. Oh, we've taken them out. We've split them in two. Enemies are no longer a threat. Well, that was... We defeated the enemy. This one small ship was able to take out a gunship. This is something that the WAPO series of class of ship have never been able to do. They've only been able to hunt in packs, but this one ship was able to take on that gunship. This ship is a lone wolf. Of course, it could be easily surrounded, ambushed, and killed by a number of drones or missiles, I'm sure. Let's switch things up a bit. How about I pilot the gunship, and the enemy has some nuke ships? So let's load up on some coil nuke cannon ships. Alright, they're trying to intercept me. And they have. Alright. Well, let's, uh, charge at them. And here comes four ships firing nukes at me. Brace yourselves. Listen to that barrage. Oh my god, those sounds. The creaking hull. Out of Delta V. Well, that was quick. We did not get split in half, though. I was kind of hoping we would get split in half. Split in half. That's what I wanted to see. I wonder how long this thing would take to cool off. Alright, enough with the losing. Now the next exciting thing to show is the nuke missile that I can launch out of my very own guns. It uses the same 95 ton warhead with a remote control with a nitromethane tank and a 1.78 kilometers per second nitromethane gimbaled combustion rocket. So I have a few weapons that fire these. I have a cannon that fires the missiles. This one fires the nuke missile P, which we were just looking at. It uh, has a muzzle velocity of only 1.16 kilometers per second. Uh, this was the my first attempt at designing a gun for handling these missiles, and I went with a cannon because of their simplicity. But I also have a coil gun we'll be looking at later on. So that brings us to the WAPO NF mounting the nuke missile cannon that we were just looking at. Additionally, this ship features a green laser. This is just a normal stock green laser, except I duplicated it and modified it to have a 100 kilometer engagement range. 
And the reason why I did this is because otherwise I would be stuck engaging the enemy at the range dictated by this nuke missile cannon. However, the game only considers the muzzle velocity. It doesn't consider the fact that it's shooting missiles that can be much more accurate at range. So let's give this a shot. The, uh... We'll go up against an enemy gunship. Let's make them aggressive. Alright, they uh, launched some flak missiles at me. That's a, a new one. But let's see, maybe our nukes can do something about it. In fact, the reason why I called this ship the Dash NF is nuclear flak, thinking that I can maybe use ship fired nukes to take out enemy missiles. But it doesn't really work out that well, as this will demonstrate fairly soon. Very rarely did they actually detonate and destroy a missile. What's more likely to happen though is that they just impact with the enemy, so why am I wasting a nuke if they're just going to impact? Also what happens a lot of the time is that the enemy missiles will become confused and all crash into each other and detonate. It's really an exploit of the missile AI than anything else and not really a valid tactic or strategy. Uh, it's not really a valid tactic in my mind. It's kind of uh, cheesy. Okay, we are now engaged with the enemy gunship. They are at 100 kilometers. I'm going to give it a couple more seconds before I start firing my nuke cannon. So let's show this gunship what a pocket nuke can do. Ignore range, and then I start firing my missiles. So of course the missiles exit the gun at their muzzle velocity, and then they start burning their fuel, gaining speed. We're now moving at 4.46 kilometers per second quite a bit more quickly than we got launched from the gun, which is the beauty of these babies. And then of course they'll be able to home in on the enemy once they get closer. And the first ones are approaching now and they are detonating. The rate of fire is quite a bit lower than the nuke coil gun that we had before. See, notice how many of the missiles are just flying right by. It's because they don't because the gunship is evading, it's fi flying off in a direction, so a lot of the earlier launched missiles aren't able to compensate. But as the gunship gets closer, we'll be able to home in on it more effectively. Oh, the gunship lost power. Well, that was, I guess, a lucky hit, really. So yeah, this, this one simple ship, armed with a cannon and nuclear missiles, maybe not so simple, was able to take on a gunship all on its own. And this is my favorite ship of the lot, the final one we will be looking at today. It features a 42 megawatt nuke missile turreted coil gun. This honkin coil gun is 804 tons costing 233 MC, consuming 42 megawatts of power and constructed of ferretic stainless steel. This thing launches nuclear missiles at a muzzle velocity of 4.51 kilometers per second. Because of the power requirements of this cannon, I had to slap an extra thermoelectric fission reactor onto my ship, and we could ignore range and start firing right from 100 kilometers out. So here come our missiles. They would have left the gun at 4.51 kilometers per second, and we've accelerated up to 7.67 kilometers per second. And remember that the cannon-fired missiles only got up to around 4.5 kilometers per second. Alright, our missiles are hitting and detonating. And the enemy has already been disabled. Looking closely at the hull, it looks like... It looks like some of the missiles impacted without actually detonating. I have the, uh, the detonation fuse set for... 1 meter. So it seems like they were moving too quickly and some of the missiles actually hit the hull and went right through. If we see these dark spots here, that's where the actual uh, hull has been, the actual armor has been completely destroyed. So in these four spots, it looks like it punched through and hit on the enemy on the other side. So this brings us to the final missile that is not even a nuclear missile at all. It is a kinetic kill vehicle. The only thing this thing is is just a missile, that's all. It has some silica aerogel on it to protect it from lasers, but yeah, it's just a missile with 
1.8 kilometers per second of delta v and 18.3 g's of acceleration. Now I can load up those kinetic kill vehicles into my 42 megawatt turreted coil gun. All right, begin firing at the enemy. And here, here goes this deadly bullet. We are moving at 7.84 kilometers per second. Here's the enemy. And yeah, you can see all the impacts as they were happening. The enemy ship has been disabled. We can see the impact sites on the enemy hull. We're still hitting it even more. Just punching right through. And we can see, it looks like some even punched all the way through to the other side. And you can see that the enemy armor has been damaged from the inside. Let's go up against, uh... Let's see. Let's pit some of our own ships against each other. Let's do 10 coil nuke cannon ships versus the coil missile launchers. Of course, this is not a balanced matchup at all, because those uh, 47 megawatt coil guns cost 233 MC each, bringing my total fleet well above 1 GC, so I need to make some adjustments here. Alright, this is about even. Two WAPO coil missile launchers versus 10 WAPO coil nuke cannons. And we are firing our kinetic kill vehicles at the enemy. And they are armed with the regular coil guns that just fire the nuke rounds. So let's see who wins. They are quite a bit, quite a ways out of range. Disabled. Is this, ship take, is this one taking hits now? Ho-ho! Right through into the power reactor. And this was the next ship to be wiped out, taking quite a, a few punishing hits to its prow. All enemies disabled. My name is Rudy, and that was Guns Shooting Nuclear Missiles. We sort of got into the realm of kinetic kill ve vehicles in the end there, and I'll probably do a video about that next. Thank you for watching, hit the thumbs up, and consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.